Welcome to the Freakers Ball, folks. This is Friday night here, August 21st, 2020. It's uh, 9 p.m. in my time, 11 p.m. on the East Coast, 8 p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, if you're in the U.S. of A., of course. If you're in other countries, I can't, I can't, I won't even hazard a guess. But welcome. This is the Freakers Ball. We are live. It's uh, reallibertymedia.com and uh, on the Freakers Ball show page or on Vaughn.live slash Real Liberty Media. Also, for the audio stream, head on over to RLM, RLM Radio. <laughs> I can almost talk. RLM Radio dot XYZ and pick up the uh, audio stream over there. You can also get to the chat there and on reallibertymedia.com. And you can head on over here to the chat where we're all at. We're all hanging out on this Friday night, having a good old time. I see a bunch of people here. A bunch of people in here chatting it up. I see Java Doctor and Moose Girl and Ben. Well, Moose Girl, who will be calling in shortly. Yeah, I'm a kinky. I'm I'm a kinky one, man. We got Chloe. We got Ben. Wow. Uh, I saw Rob Works in here and Hansel, a.k.a. J. Dredd. Duh. The Dusta. And uh, uh, who else we got hanging around with us tonight? I don't know. Zipex I see popping in and out. Dan from Tennessee was hanging around for a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know who all's here. Chloe, uh, I already mentioned her. I see her up there in the list again. Uh, Woodman, uh, the, 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 wood, the, wood, the Woody, the Meister Brow. Uh, let me just uh, just rattle off some of the names on the list that I don't see chatting. People like Beetle and Barman and uh, Miss Kate. Miss Kate, you awake? Uh, anti Hazamo. Uh, we also got Chelsea Doney and uh, uh, Flash. He's probably asleep. He's over there in Denmark, you know, so so he's probably sleeping. Uh, Moose, so I'm hearing that. Uh, are my audio levels all right? Check, 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 check. Everything looks good, I think, on this end. Yeah, no, my audio levels are up to par, up to spec. So, uh, any, anyway, uh, Prince, who will probably be doing a show tomorrow night, <laughs> I don't know, and JJ's and uh, Graham V. Hey, Graham V. Hey! All right, thank you, Chloe. Uh, and, and there's there's Rome. Thank you, thank you for that, Rome. So I appreciate the audio checks there. Uh, all right, and we got the box about Vanna White, Weatherdorf. Uh, ben Wall! Uh, yeah, I already mentioned him. <laughs> oh, all kinds of people come on over. There's a there's a nice group hanging out here. Frumpy, are you are you awake, Frumpy? All right. So uh, ten by ten. Thank you. That, that's that's better than five by five by at least double. At least somewhere in there. All right. Well, Moose Girl will be calling in shortly. I would assume. I would think. Um, no, I didn't say anything. Nope. No. All right, uh, anyway, <laughs> hopefully you're all having a good week or had a good week out there. Uh, uh, you know, we made it through another one. We survived another one. Uh, uh, as for me, it was hot here today. It was hot, hot. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and my AC didn't work too, work too great today. It, it didn't, uh, uh, well, it's just not keeping up with the heat. It was like 98 degrees here today, which it's been 98 off and on. And, and most days, the AC kicks ass, just works, you know. Uh, and and sometimes, some days it's actually cold in here. But right now, it's like 80 degrees in this room, and I don't like that. I like I, I, I like it down around 72. Uh, that, 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 that's, that's my preferred temperature uh, year-round, you know, summer, winter, fall, and spring. Uh, I, I, I prefer around 72 degrees. Uh, I, you know, tend to knock off the AC and the heat during the fall and the spring as much as possible. Uh, some days, though, sometimes here in New Mexico, and it's probably the similar where, where some of y'all are out there, but uh, one day it's summer, and the next day it's winter. And then you're like, hey, where did that fall go? <laughs> It happens on the other side, too. It's winter, then suddenly it's summer. It's just like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I could use that little break, that you know, a couple months break in the middle between the hot or the cold seasons. But sometimes old man weather or whatever you call them, I don't know, they just don't give it to you. And so you go from hot to cold or cold to hot. 
hopefully this year we'll get a nice uh, real fall season. That would be highly appreciated. Got some winterizing to do outside, as always, but, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, what, what else going on? What else going on? Um, well, on Monday, on Monday will be the, uh, I will be into my sixth decade here on the planet. Six decades! Yeah, uh, so I, I, I turned 60 on Monday. But uh, anyway, so somebody bought me a gift this week. Uh, I, I, I am pretty sure I know who it was. But I haven't I haven't spoken with that person yet. Uh, anyway, the, the gift is this nice this this uh, nice guitar amp uh, made by Pile. It's a 60 watt thing. It's got oh some nice little features in it, and I gotta say I dig it. It's freaking awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, it sounds really good with with the uh, with the cigar box too, man. Oh boy, also with the electric. But uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It's, it's cool. Um, anyway, so I don't know what, what, what's holding the moose up. Uh, she's not called in yet. I think she's, uh, trying to figure out her audio situation going on over there. Uh, and, uh, so I, I don't know. I, I guess she'll call in. Um, maybe I'll play a set and then we'll come back and any RLM news? RLM news. Let me think. Nah. Oh, uh, well. Dark Table will be late tomorrow. It'll be on. Dark Table will still be on tomorrow, but it'll be late. Uh, Flash was a little non-committal as to what time he was actually going to start. Uh, say, great, Moose. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and play a set anyway, and then uh, you can call in after that. And uh, let's let's kick this thing off here with a little uh, bit of a guy named uh, Gary Clark Jr., you may be familiar with him. You may have heard of him. Um. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Gary Clark Jr. Wait, which one did I pick? Oh, I picked the wrong one. Got to pick the right camera. All right. Here we go. Howdy, I'm Gary Clark Jr. I'm proud to be... There you go, Woo! Mikey. Take Get me out. <laughs> Sandy Hagar and the Circle on lockdown session number five back on April 30th there doing ACDC's Oh, lot of Rosie. Oh, man, that's, that's some good stuff there. Uh, before that, C6 Steve doing Toes in the Mud. Oh, that was just a couple weeks ago. He recorded that one August 5th there. Uh, toes in the Mud, C6 Steve. Uh, yeah, that's great stuff, man. And uh, we kicked it off with Gary Clark Jr. doing a new child at the Apollo Theater. Uh, that was on June 4th, 2020. So all those songs, pretty pretty darn new here. All lockdown style tunages for you yeah, all. Moose Girl uh, at the end here. Be right back. All right, Moose, you can be right back. I'll be I'll be here. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I tell you. Oh, man. Yeah, hey, man, it's uh, starting to cool off here. Hopefully that will help the uh, AC unit actually do its job as it's supposed to. And I won't be as um, um, aggro. Am I aggro? Yeah, I'm never really aggro. <laughs> Quiet, you. Dang video. Starting up without without, without me allowing it. Over there. <laughs> oh, man. Where were we here? Oh, I, I see. I, I would save that one for Cirque, but she's never around during the show. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll do something different. We'll do something different than that because, uh, well, well, maybe I'll play it anyway later. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. Oh, wait. Now, now, now we have a phone call. Now we have a phone call. Now we have the Mighty Moose Girl. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. How you doing? Hanging in there. Is that so? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yep. Glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> how are you? I'm all right, I guess. How are you doing? You already asked me that. Oh. Duh. <laughs> Well, now there's people are cheering for you being all right. You're almost 
it's almost your birthday. Almost, yeah. 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 It's a big one, Grim. Uh, it is, yeah. Six freaking decades. <laughs> Man, that's an accomplishment. You should be happy and proud of yourself. Uh, I don't know about any of that, but but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, sur- I survived uh, all this time. You know, when when I was twenty, I certainly didn't think I was going to make it to forty. And, uh, when I was forty, I, sixty was definitely out of the question. <laughs> So now that I'm 60, I was like, well, I better, better, better start chopping it down to 10 years. So 70 is out of the question. There you go. <laughs> no. Oh. You're healthy. No, You're I, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm all good. You know, I got, I yep. got, I got, I got no uh, medical issues whatsoever. Uh, right. So at least none that I'm aware of because I don't That's go. That's good. I, I don't go to those those people. Those, those yeah, medi- those I medical, agree. Yeah. Medical type yep. morons. I, I avoid them like the plague because they are like the plague. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so. I mean they'll find something wrong with you, or yeah. or they will make, yeah. make make something be wrong with you. Just going into those, those right disease pits they call hospitals, right exactly, you know, or just even the general doctor's offices. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy as hell. Yeah, and I, I got I got I got no I don't I don't want no part of that. I don't want no part of that. I remember one time I had to take my kids to the ER. They were like three, three years old. Right. Almost four, probably. I don't know. Anyway, we had just moved to a new place and, you know, everything's all everywhere. You know, when you move, everything's all fucked up, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I had some vitamins out, like a bottle of vitamins. Right. And... They found the bottle and grabbed the bottle and it dumped on the floor, right? Okay. And the cap came off. Okay. And so I didn't know, but apparently you have to call poison control when this happens because your kid, we didn't know how, if they ingested any or how many, right? Well, what? It was vitamins, right? Yeah. What, what, what kind of vitamins were they? With iron. Okay, in them. Okay. Apparently, you can have a problem with iron, like an overdose of iron or something, right. when you are a child. And so, I mean, I had to call poison control. You didn't have to. What do you mean? You didn't have to. You did. No, I didn't, but I did. Yeah. Call, you know, okay. because okay. my... Well, I was talking to a family member or something, and they're like, well, you have to um, call poison control because there's iron in them. Um, uh, and right. they, it can be an overdose or whatever and be harmful. And I'm like, holy shit. You know, I didn't know. That was one thing. I thought I was like, knew everything, you know, <laughs> not everything, but knew about parenting and about you know, poisons and keeping them away from kids and all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And so I had to bring him to ER, even though they seemed fine at that time. Okay. Um, But apparently, you can have some serious complications from iron poisoning. Sure. So you, I had to take them to the, the hospital, the ER, right? Okay. And they turned out fine. It took a long time. We were there like three hours. You know, when you go to the ER, you got to plan at least a three-hour thing. Okay. It is. All right. Yeah, because I don't know why they're so goddamn slow in the ER, but they are. Okay. Maybe it's so that, you know, I don't know why. It's yeah, probably but... more, it has to do with money. But anyway, I get home with these kids, and literally the next day, and the, cause so we were at the ER the night, at night, right? It was like. Eight, not, we got out there like at nine thirty. And, and how old? Ten how o'clock. Old, how old were they? They were like three. Okay. And or like in between three and four, like three and a half. All right. Anyway, we get home and the next day, and they were fine. The next day, they're both violently ill. <laughs> and so I call up the you know the ER. Because we we moved from a dip to a different town, so we were like new to the area, right? Okay. And I called the ER and I said, "My kids are now violently ill. What? 
you know, why is that? Because I had them in the day before for this iron poisoning. I didn't know if they were still maybe the next day experiencing something. You know what I mean? Right. So I called the hospital where we had gone, and they're like, oh, well, there was a kid in here or someone in here that had a case of rotavirus, and your kids must have got that. <laughs> from being in the ER. I'm like, thanks a lot. Jesus, you know? yeah. And I'm just like freaking out because, I mean, it was, oh, my God. It was hor- horrific. And both kids were that way. Yeah. At the same time. I'm like, oh, my God, this is a nightmare. <laughs> so it's true that you can pick up a lot of things. Sure. When If you go to these facilities, if they don't do proper cleaning or whatever, you can pick up the stuff. Well, know? it don't matter. I mean, they, they're all in there breathing out their nasty ass stuff that they got. So it don't matter how well they clean. If the kids, yeah. if the kids sitting there in the same, you know, emergency waiting room. Right. And then, you know. <laughs> because kids aren't very good, like little kids especially, they're not very good at covering their mouth or washing their hands. Right. They are not, unless the parents like doing it for them, or something, you know what I mean. I mean, they're just not good at at, at the, a certain age. Once they, you can teach them to do that stuff. Sure, but, sure. You know, I even asked. I I finally stopped asking my kids if they wash their hands. <laughs> yeah. And they're twenty. They're like, Mom. <laughs> I'm like, Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, 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 keep talking. I'll be back right in a minute. Okay, sure, yeah. So, I mean, they're like, Mom, we're 20. Really? (laughs) So, uh, don't be uh, talking to us like we're little kids anymore. Anyway, it's hard to uh, let that mentality go once they become adults. You're like, okay, (laughs) they're on their own. Well, they've been on their own since they were 14, basically, making their own decisions or whatever. Okay, Ben, Mandolin Orange, good. Yeah, they were, Mandolin Orange is playing on YouTube there for a little bit. So that's cool. If you guys haven't heard of them or know of them, check them out. Mandolin, well, you should. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. But um, anyway, Grimner, yes. where you go? Uh, there he is. He's back. Yeah, right. I pop the sugar break. Pop the sugar break, it what? Pop the circuit breaker. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. How'd that happen? Uh, the AC, it's the AC circuit breaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, Overload yeah. or something? I guess, it, you know, it's been running all day, so whatever. It happens. Yeah, that does happen. Yeah. When I first moved into this house, mm-hmm. we had the fuses. <laughs> Oh, those are terrible, yeah. Yeah, we had fuses when this halt when I first moved in the, here. The, the screw screw in type? Yep, yep, yeah. you know it. And then finally, you know, I'd lived here a couple of years and I did that rehab loan yeah. and that was part of it too, was getting that, that panel replaced with circuit breakers. Yep. Yeah, that was a huge upgrade. That's right, Ben. I was playing mandolin orange too loud and I, there goes the breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, but you know, I'm sure that my my box is probably the same age as the house, which would put it at uh, right. 73 till now, however long that is. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of years. Uh but uh Yeah. Yeah, I I uh, you know, I I have replaced a couple of the actual, you know, switches, the breaker switches. Mm-hmm. But uh, not that one, I don't think yet. So it may be time. <laughs> so I'm in a dilemma. It's not a big deal, but it's just something that I I noticed that with hockey, okay, there's just, you know, Kraft, the company Kraft Foods. Right. They do this thing every year called Hockeyville. And they provide a, one community in the country with $150 in rink upgrades. Okay. 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 And? Anyway... Um, yeah, I think they're part of Heinz now, too. I think they merged. But anyway, um, so River Falls is one of the, there's, there's four cities up for it. 
East Grand Forks, Minnesota, El Paso, Texas, Wichita, Kansas, and River Falls, Wisconsin. Okay, so I've personally been to the River Falls facility that they have in there, the Wildcat Center. Okay. And it's freaking beautiful, dude. Okay? It's one of the best rinks out of all the rinks I've been to in this state. For but yet, uh, for that level what? of hockey. Yes, for youth hockey. And the high school team plays there, too. The high school teams use this facility, and the girls, all the hockey teams do in the area. Okay. The youth hockey, the high school, the girls teams. And so when I walked into that rink, I was like, wow. Because it's, it's literally, it's it's got to be five years old, the building. Right. So what Eau Claire had to do, though, which we upgraded our rink, too. Yeah, River Falls uses the Wildcat Center as well, the, the college level. Because it's a beautiful rink. So how in the hell are they appealing to need $150,000 in rink upgrades when their rink is already beautiful? Okay? So I would think East Grand Forks, which I need to watch their little promo video, but I would think not even East Grand Forks, because they're in Minnesota, which is the state of hockey, right? Right. Their rink's probably beautiful. El Paso, Texas, I would think would be a more deserving recipient. Just because it's Texas, dude. Hockey's huge in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Hockey's not as big in Texas as it is up here. And I guarantee you, probably, their facilities, it's East Grand Forks, though, Ben. Not Grand Forks. But they, they're saying, calling it East Grand Forks for some reason. Minnesota. Anyway, I would bet that El Paso is more deserving of this at this time than any of these other cities. All right. But I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, not too far, duh. But um, it's a real, I love River Falls. I love that town. I mean, I would, if they win this money, that would be great. I mean, hopefully they'd use it, you know, because their rink really doesn't need to be upgraded. That's my point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't even know if I'm going to participate in voting in this contest here, but... um, I, I thought about um, nominating Eau Claire when my kid was playing hockey, right. but I'm like, no, because you know the the communities rally around these hockey teams, and the, especially at the youth level. I mean, when my kid played, I was a single mom, so they had the youth hockey had a scholarship program, and I qualified for. Right, like they didn't want to exclude anybody from playing hockey. Sure. You know, and so most of these communities are, are, are good, but I would think down in Texas, mm-hmm. hockey's not as big down there. You know, they probably, and, and, and you have a lot of uh, Latino kid, Mexican kids down there, you know, that's right, right. Which that would be wonderful to get some of them kids involved in hockey. That would be in, in, in awesome, you know, yeah, yeah, it'd be great because, you know, El Paso. It's a tough place to grow up, dude. I can only imagine. But you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's it's, it's right there on the border of Mexico and Texas. Yeah. Look at all this shit that's been going on with the border stuff and all the immigration stuff. And, you know what I mean? Through the years. It's just got to be a rough place to live, you know, to grow up. Oh, yeah. And a lot of the people there don't have a lot of money, you know, and hockey's expensive. I mean, the equipment is expensive. You know, so the, I would think that a town like that would probably be more deserving of this money. That's probably. just my take on it. But. Yeah. yeah, but everybody's going to try for it that, that has it available to them, so. Right. I mean, more power to them, but like like I said, I've been in some really shitty rinks throughout the 13 years that I, my kid was in hockey, okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and River Falls definitely doesn't need a rink upgrade. <laughs> Right. No way. Right. I mean, I just think any kind of sport or any kind of um, thing you can do for a kid, you know, to help them, even if they're growing up in a rough environment, you can offer programs and services and 
stuff like that, so they they have a better tr- shot, a better shot at making it. You know what I mean, and not becoming, not going into prison. <laughs> yeah. And I think people just forget about that, and they just. I, I think lately. So I'm done with the hockey thing. Okay. <laughs> I think lately. The way with the media and the movies and the music, you know, um, they don't want kids to be kids anymore. Right. And there's a big problem with that because, you know, if you grow up in a rough environment and you grow up, odds are you're going to end up in prison, okay? Odds are. That's just the way it is right now. And it's not right. It's not I don't know. I just think, and I don't think we should rely on government to provide that either. You know, should rely I on think government the for anything. Uh, what? You shouldn't rely on government for anything. Right. If they whatever they do, they screw up anyway. So. Right. I mean, the thing, <laughs> the way that they try to quote unquote help, obviously, it's not working. Okay. Yeah. Because we, you know, they talk about the prison, what they say, that prison, school to prison pipeline or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm not all sure what they exactly that means, but... Well, it means that school's basically a prep for you going to prison. Okay. Uh, and they, they, they uh, you know, they got all those, what, what do they call them, resource cops or whatever. Right. Uh, there now, yeah. and, and they'll, they'll, they'll get you for any little, any little thing that they say that you did whether you did it or not because they mm-hmm. a lot of those times they'll, they'll just not like a certain kid and they'll say oh yeah we caught him doing this that or the other thing and right uh, we're, we're throwing him in the hoose cow because uh, well we can and and so we will um <laughs> so yeah. i'm just saying what needs to happen you know we've been talking about this for a while too grassroots things you know a community needs to have facilities and resources because if the parents have to both work and the kids are left on the, to their own devices, you have to, you, you, you really need to have some or should have something for them to do that's productive and not just playing video games and listening to their stupid music. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I shouldn't say it's stupid music. No music is stupid, okay? I don't, um, I don't know, but I don't, I don't know. I, I might have to disagree with that. But. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that's how. Well, I use sports that way as like kind of a buffer for being a single mom, you know. Yeah. And you just you, it's a crapshoot being a parent. It doesn't matter what environment you grow in up in, really. You can still be a loser <laughs> if you grow up rich or poor. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. It doesn't matter. And I think nowadays, though, like I started with this, is there? there's no childhood left anymore. Yeah. They want kids to be like adults. And this is not right, you guys. In my opinion, this is not cool. When you're sexualizing kids, something's wrong, okay? It's messed up. Something's fucked up with that, Hell okay? yeah, hell yeah. And I don't know what they're fucking trying to do to kids these days, but it sure as hell ain't the same as when I was a fucking kid. Yeah, or either that or it's just more public now. You know, they, they're, they're trying to make it so it's normalized, where they where they make the kids sexual things well i don't know if you guys saw that article that um kate posted i think it was kate and it's this show that's coming up on uh the netflix thing yeah the netflix thing yeah it's cuties or something yeah it's called cuties and, and they got these little little girls twerking all over the stage yeah and and it's like I, I don't. I mean, it's just. I've it's read. I've beyond. read. I've read from people on there that it was supposed to be uh, to expose what what's going on in the industry, uh, right. rather than trying to uh, make it you know so that it you know it's for the perverts. 
But right, but here but, is the here's okay. I'm but, gonna but, post this link here. But but the thing is, the thing is on it. Um, the the way they're advertising it, who do they think is gonna watch it? it it's gonna be well, obviously. Who you, who do you think's gonna watch it based on that the American version of the, the ad for the movie? Oh my god, it's right. disgusting, dude. So yeah, I mean, why 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 not go with that French version? I mean. Uh, yeah. Right. Why did you have to sexualize it? The American. I mean, maybe that's not real. Grim. Has anyone like? No, it's real. Dove deep on this one. I mean, how can that? Well, that was that was the the the, the French version. It was from a film. Uh, it was done wow. in, a, in a film based thing, and the, and the American version yep. is what Netflix took from it, and it's going to make their, uh, their their show out of. So um, this is what I'm talking about, okay? Right, so it, when, this when, type of thing. When, when you know Netflix, they're they're fairly evil anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I haven't had Netflix for a while, so I don't have to worry about all their crap. But uh, well, once they started pumping out all that, uh, what was Barack Obama crap? Um, <laughs> yeah, I gotta quit my cancel my members. I don't I don't watch them. I haven't watched Netflix. For a while, I yeah, think about see. it. Come to think about it, I, I I just use Amazon for movies um, and Tubi, but Tubi's free. But uh, Amazon, yeah. But uh, that that comes with my Prime that, that I get all kinds of other stuff with. So and it costs less than Netflix, and I get all kinds of I get all the free shipping and music and eBooks, all kinds of stuff comes with the Amazon thing. Now, of course, a lot of people say, "Oh, Amazon's oh, evil." Eh, maybe, probably. Um, <laughs> probably. I mean, <laughs> but, but 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 they but they they have some. Uh, it's it's a good, uh, it's still good deals on that they have on stuff, and especially like, uh, you know, whatever their movies and all that. So, um, I I I'll I'll, I'll stick with uh, Amazon, uh, even though they're yeah, even though they're evil. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, oh, are they evil? I mean. <laughs> I mean, as evil as Bill Gates? I mean, oh, no. Uh, really? Are they? I mean, that, come that, on. That, what's evil? I mean, that, why that, are they that, evil? That, why a, are they evil? I, I don't, that, know. I don't a, get it. That's a pretty high hurdle. Uh, yeah, it is. Well, just, um, you know, because they, they're Because Jeff Bezos is a fucking tr- quad billionaire or whatever the fuck he is. The richest man in the world or whatever. But, yeah, um, whatever, you know. But, but uh, the thing, you know, because uh, uh, he Bezos owns things like uh, the, uh, what's that, Washington Post. Which is like uh, the the mega lefty thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's there's one reason to question him, um, uh, but but also for I mean as as you know for your own local businesses, it's not you know if you buy everything on Amazon, it's not good for your own local businesses. No, it is not. So no. I, I I mean you know there's trade offs that you got to deal with, but right. Um, I, I still buy from local businesses, um, but but yeah. But there's stuff on Amazon I, I can't get anywhere you else. You can't there. find in your your town. Yeah, and, and they bring it right to my freaking door. Right. <laughs> Pretty convenient. Not as fast as it was pre-corona. Right. But uh, it's still, still pretty quick. You know? Yeah. And, so I've been ordering a lot of stuff online. I've only received one mangled package, which is good. And, I, and the, the the contents wasn't damaged, so I was like, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm good, good, you know. Yeah, yeah but, most, um, most of my ahead. packages come in fine shape. I don't, I don't, uh, I haven't had any bad packages come in. That was from the USPS, though, not Amazon. Yeah, well. But anyway, um, speaking of USPS, the mail-in ballot thing. Yeah. If they do that, do you know how much, how much of a fucking mess that will be? Oh, it'll be a never-ending mess. You, uh, you uh, can't control a mail-in balloting system. No, I, I don't know what the what, number what, of ballots is that they are supposedly wanting to send out. Well, what, what, but can what, you see what, the problems with this? What, what I don't, what I don't understand is <laughs> they, they already have this absentee ballot thing, right? Right. Well, why don't they just use that? Why right. Are they, why are they coming out with a brand new right. system? Yeah. Just, uh, just in this. You know, last minute kind of ditch effort to to you know uh, to do yeah. bad shit with. Well, why not just use the system they have that seems to have been working? 
I mean, you know, as much as any voting system yeah, works. Well, see, absentee, I don't know what, I've never done that, so I have no idea what, I, I, apparently it's like if you're on vacation or something. Whatever. You're not going to be able to vote on November 3rd, so you do an absentee ballot, right? Oh, so, fine. So why, they could change that rule so it's not just if you're on vacation or whatever. Right. It's if you don't want to vote in person. Yeah. As well. But why are they going to do it? The way well, they're trying to do it is asinine. Well, yeah, they want to send ballots to everybody. Right. And a lot of those people don't want ballots. Are dead. Well, they're or dead. they're dead already. Right. They're dead or they're, they've moved to another address. Somebody else is living there. Do you see there. problems with this in an election? Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it would be horrible. It would be an, a nightmare. Anyway, I found a guy. I found a guy. Okay. That that might that might be worth a that might be worth looking at for a, okay. for voting for president. Oh really? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Are you joking? <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Anarchist presidential candidate releases comprehensive <laughs> zero point plan. <laughs> <laughs> so the up and coming anarchist candidate, uh, Lord Dweebles Dragonborn, is gaining in the <laughs> polls after unveiling his proposed plan for the country, which involves doing absolutely nothing. Uh, pundits and political consultants were left scratching their heads after the release of the document, which is just a blank piece of paper that smelled faintly of cannabis. Uh, his his zero point plan to save the country is making waves. Republicans and de <laughs> Democrats reacted in horror. Wait, how can we have a government just not do anything? How will people know what to do? What will become of our jobs? Wait, who will <laughs> build the roads? They oh, shrieked, God, not that again. They, they oh, shrieked God. in terror. The roads, not the roads. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this idea, there, there's this idea that people can form their own local governments if they want or not or whatever, uh, said one local representative. People could just do whatever they want or organize themselves however they want. It's literal insanity. Uh, but besides, who would build the roads? Have I mentioned that? Uh, as, 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 as Lord Dragonborn rises in the polls, people are already drafting new and innovative ideas for what their own dream societies might look like if Dragonborn is elected. One proposal... <laughs> Dragon, well, come on and, now. Well, one proposal involves building... Come an, on now. <laughs> building Art, art Deco-style underwater city and inject, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. injecting the cities with the citizens... Yeah with serums to create superhuman mutant yeah, abominations. Uh -huh. Okay. An anarchist commentator... Babylon B, all the way, <laughs> or Onion, all the way. Anarchist commentator... Fuck this. Anarchist commentator Michael Malice came out in support of the candidate's plan, saying he's particularly appreci appreciated point zero of the plan, as well as points zero through zero. Uh, the, the corporate press is the enemy of the people, so they won't ever cover Dragonborn's brilliant plan. The depra depravity of malfeasance of the corporate press is without cessation. We thanked Malice for his comments, and he replied, You're welcome. Uh, for, the, for, 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 for fans of the anarchist candidate, insist that if he is elected, he will likely be the greatest president since, well, nobody. <laughs> Oh. Satire. <laughs> Hooray for Lord Dragonborn. Yes. Yeah. And his, yeah, right. his, yeah. mm -hmm. his, his zero point plan to, to save everything and let people do whatever the oh. hell they want. Do what you want. Live your life how you feel. <laughs> it's the only it's the only one that makes sense. He's the only, yeah. he's the only one that makes any sense. All right. We're going to play some music. All right. Let's do that. And we shall return, hopefully. And um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Yeah, and we're going to just go ahead and call this set Moose Music. All right. Sounds good to me. Enjoy, everyone. If you want. All right. Harry Chapin Taxi. Uh, this is a, was an all Moose Girl request set there. 
I was, I was Harry Chapin to a taxi and sighing so high when he's stoned. Before that, Ed Sheeran doing Masters of War. Uh, another, uh, that, that's an old Dylan song, uh, in case you were wondering. Uh, and we kicked it off with Billy Strings doing a song, a track called Home. Home. So, uh, yeah, good good stuff there. Good, good muse, 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 music, music. Good music. <laughs> music. Yeah. <laughs> music. I like that. That works. That's cool. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. You're you're witty, Grim. Oh, I know. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sharp as a you butter. You are. Come on now. Sharp, sharp as a butter knife. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Boy. <sighs> Ah, it's just this. I just thought about this earlier. I'm like, this year has just been messed up, dude. Yeah. It's already freaking August. It's almost September. You know. Right. Think, think. I mean, I just wish I want this year to be done, dude. And I don't know if it's gonna be better next year. Ah, but see, it's, that's the that's the thing, isn't it? Right. It's probably <laughs> it, you know we don't. Uh, we do. We do. We you do. got all this stuff. Going on with like, okay, I don't know how much you have been researching lately. The CMEs, oh, or I, the I, solar I, flares and I, shit. I, I have a story. All right, hey, imagine that. Well, not necessarily about the solar flares, but the so, CMEs. No. Oh, okay. Well, tell a story. It was what so, is it? it was so close. It just missed us. Just by that darn much. it. Just by that much. Oh, <laughs> all right, first call, uh, on Zero Hedge, close call, asteroid unexpectedly makes the closest pass of Earth on record. Wow. Well, so uh, it, was, it was no big deal, but still. Uh, asteroid 2020QG just made the close, made the closely pass by? Who wrote this? Uh, <laughs> made, made the, I'll just read it as it says. Made the closely pass by. What? The closely uh, uh, made, it made it closely pass by. Hey, whatever, whatever. That's the way I don't know. Anyway, I have no uh, idea. And they made the closely pass, pass by <laughs> of our planet on record. The most amazing part? Scientists didn't even see it coming. Uh, the asteroid came as No co- way! Yeah, well, I'm telling you. No way! Uh, the asteroid came as close as 4,778 miles from the center of the Earth. According to the NASA's database of near-Earth objects, a new report by Forbes, at its lowest point, it could have been just 1,000 miles over our heads, lower than almost all artificial satellites that are currently orbiting Earth. Uh, The asteroid was not spotted until after it passed Earth, which is wild considering it is officially the closest call since we started following such passes nearly 100 years ago. The asteroid, not that big, had a diameter of 10 to 20 feet, according to NASA, who also says that the asteroid likely didn't pose a threat, even if it had entered into Earth's atmosphere, it would have likely burned up in the atmosphere. So, not that big a deal, but still, come on now. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, apparently there was another one back in 2018 uh, that, that that they didn't quite catch <laughs> anyway so no i haven't been paying the uh i mean i i, I look at the uh, space weather thing every couple of days uh just to see what's going on up there because you know it affects yeah me. um but uh, uh but uh, the, the the cmes that that uh clyde is that who was uh was was, yeah. ta- was talking yep, about the yep. other night it wasn't that it wasn't that it was like a it was a, it was a low level cme oh okay um uh, but but there was a lot of uh, uh, solar gases headed out from it. So uh, oh, okay. Uh, but 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 it still, I mean, it could have caused some issues. Uh, yeah, but you're know. usually pretty sensitive to solar flares. And I stuff, am. Right? I, I definitely am. Um, but, um, uh, so you haven't been feeling that? No, I didn't get all. anything. I, I didn't get anything. Okay. I mean, me, well, I go by you because I know it affects you a lot. Uh, let me let me pull up my uh, my. Uh, my NOAA space weather here. In hey, JJSTO. How's it going there in good old Missouri? Is here? Where is JJ here? 
Yeah, he just showed up. Oh, I'm not seeing him. Just either. show me, state. I'm not, I'm not seeing him there in the chat. Okay. Android uh, user. Oh, that's, that's him? him? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, all right. All right, so, yeah, this was only, like, uh, it, was, it was in the low uh, G1 rating, you know. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, you, you could take a look, but, but these are, these, that was nothing. Uh, once it gets up in the G2, G3 range, and, uh -huh. uh, and then it's something to start getting a little bit excited about. Um, oh, he's sick. Oh, oh no. Uh, anyway, take, well, take, you need to get you some echinacea, some zinc, and some vitamin C, dude. Yep, mega dose of vitamin C. Hit the hit the uh, echinacea a couple times a day. Yep, and, uh, get some echinacea. If you don't have it on hand, get you some, boy. You yep. need some. Um, <laughs> All right. I, I went when my son had to be te okay. So update on my son. He tested negative. All right. Um, he was feeling like shit. After his supervisor at work tested positive, quote unquote positive, yeah. So, you know, he couldn't work for three days. So he lost three days of work to find out he's negative. Now everything's all good. He can go back to work and back to life. And his roommates don't have to be tested unless they want to be. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, they don't have to quarantine and all that stuff. Right. But I mean. Anyway, look at that uh, look at that chart there on on, yep. the, on the space weather. Where'd you? Okay. Yeah, and you'll see it, it, it's all very low level. Um, there, was, there was nothing. There oh, okay. Was, there, was, there was nothing too monstrous about it. Anyway, mm -hmm. you, should keep, you should keep that uh, that 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 site bookmarked and okay. And this one here. Um, I'm cause... just gonna look up CME really quick. Just yeah, but, to, but look, look up, in case look, people don't know what the hell we're talking about. But bookmark the spaceweather dot com as well. Um, it gives you more descriptive things than, than the other one. Uh, so it kind of tells you what's coming in, what's going on. Here it says, CME misses Earth. There's no sign of a CME expected to hit Earth. Uh, yesterday, August 20th, it probably missed. The CME mm -hmm. did hit NASA's Stereo A spacecraft. Uh, the geometry of the Stereo A impacts, impacts suggests the storm uh, cloud sailed wide of our planet. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> right, and here's one. Okay, so this is the other thing that Clyde was talking about, Graham. Yeah. And he was talking to someone, or he got an email or something, some communication from someone in Ethiopia, okay? You, you probably got mono, JJ. You might have mono. <laughs> I mean, but anyway, um, I was going to say that... He, Someone in Ethiopia said that the the continent of Africa is splitting apart in Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah. And it's just been going on for a while. You know, things when when things happen with the Earth, it takes a really long time. Sure. But anyway, and this this also has to do with this other thing. It's all like connected. It's Research all connected. Is, it is. Researchers track slowly splitting dent in Earth's magnetic field. And this is that anomaly he was talking about. All right. Okay. So there's an anomaly that's coming up from, like, Antarctica area, which is very questionable because they have – Russia's down there. The U.S. is down there. They have bases and shit set up down there. And whatever they're doing, who know, who the fuck knows, Right. Right. But they've been down there for a while. My uncle was in the Navy in the 60s. He was in McMurdo for six months, dude. I don't think they call it McMurdo anymore, though. I have no idea. But there's weird shit going on down there. that No one knows about it because no one's there, okay? Right. Except for the people that are there, no one lives there. No humans, yeah, like it's unless very, you're a scientist, or you know what I'm saying. It's it's a very small population. Yes. Anyway, um, apparently this this magnetic this dent they're calling it or anomaly, whatever you want to call it, in the magnetic field is causing big headaches for satellites. It says Earth's magnetic shield or field, excuse me, acts like a protective shield around the planet, repelling and trapping charged particles from the sun. 
but there's an unusually weak spot in the field, a slowly expanding dent over South America. Okay, so it's not Antarctica. South America and the Southern Atlantic Ocean called the South Atlantic Anomaly, or SAA. Right. You know how they love their abbreviations, right? Oh, acronyms, sure. They anyway, are. that allows these particles to dip closer to the surface than normal. The SAA developed as a result in changes to the motion of the Earth's core, according to an August 12, 2020 NASA statement. Let me quick click that so I can get that for you. Okay, you saw what Immediately Earth, they you, had a link to that you, you so, saw, you in saw, the article. You saw what Rome said there, right? Okay, there you go. And um, Most, Did you see what Rome said there? Although the SAA arises from processes Am inside Earth, hello? it has hello? effects that reach far beyond <laughs> Earth's surface. Most Particle re- radiation in this region can knock out onboard computers and interfere with, interfere with the data collection of satellites that pass through it. Yeah. If a satellite is hit by a high-energy proton, it can short-circuit and cause an event, a, cause an event called single-event upset. Yeah. This can cause the satellite's function to glitch temporarily or cause permanent damage if a key component is hit. Right, right. So, basically, they're worried about this thing because of the, their satellites, all the millions of satellites that they have up there. Sure. But this thing has been getting bigger, and it's 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 a real thing. It's not made up. It's not. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. What I I I was trying to. Are you here? Can you hear me? Anyway. Moose girl. Moose I thought that was girl. interesting. Hello, hello. Hey there, Rick. Hello, hello. <laughs> she has me on mute. She has me on mute. <laughs> what happened? You have me on mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right, that, that's why she wasn't hearing me. She muted me. Aw, I, I was listening to her, but she was not uh, listening to me. All right. Um. <laughs> I, okay, I got you. All right, right there you go. <laughs> but you could hear me, right? Yeah, I was trying to talk to you. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry uh, about that. I was asking if you saw what Rome said in there. We're on ignore. Uh, well, because I was I was talking to you. They they heard me talking to you. Oh, okay. And, 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 you, Sorry were, about and, and you weren't responding. I, I kept on. What were you saying? <laughs> I, I, I was asking if you saw what Rome said there in the chat. Rome's in the chat. Yeah, you know who Rome's is. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah had, I did. He said the U.S. is splitting in half too. Oh, okay. You mean the whole U.S.? Okay. The well, is US. it the Madeira fault or is it the? San, it's not the. Can't be the San Andreas fault because that's not in the middle. Is, you're talking like is it like in the middle, like the Madeira fault or whatever it's called? Madrid. What's it called? Yeah, Madrid. 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 The great something like that. Madrid fault, not Madeira. Yeah. I I don't know. He just made the comment. He didn't. He didn't expand on it. Right. But. I have noticed that there have been earthquakes in weird spots lately. Now. You know, like it, North Carolina. It, and, it, it would be cool. Know. It would be what, what would be cool is like if it split into like three slices, one big one on each side for the like the, the Democrats on one side, Republicans on the other side, <laughs> uh, and and then a smaller one in the middle for people to just want to be left alone. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we, or maybe we could be on one edge or the other, but but the edges tend to attract the the you know those types. So I'll, I'll be I'll be fine in the middle. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah. yeah. So just just leave me in the middle on the, with the people that want to be left alone. So split it split it into three nice slices, um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god! And there won't, you know. But the thing is, is there really won't be a warning. Like if a big earthquake hits, there's no pre warning for those. You know, no, like no. the hurricane, they can see them coming. With a tornado, you know, you can. Kind of tell if it's going to be a tornado, usually. Sure, You know sure. I mean? But with earthquake, you don't know what the fuck, you know? Yeah, it comes pretty quickly within a minute or so's notice. I mean, uh, right. because you can kind of feel it. Your animal, if you have animals, they can feel Right, tell. they so, get freaked out yeah, a little you bit. Can, you can see something ain't right or feel something ain't right. Right, uh, like something changes. Like, do you feel like do your ears pop or anything like that? Like, is there uh, a change in pressure? Well, there is, but it's it's it's... 
It's very slight. You have to be attuned to it. Right. But, and uh, like with a tornado, I know, I felt that experience where there's a change in the pressure. Oh, yeah. That, that's it's really that's, weird. It's like, oh, my God. Go more, to the basement <laughs> right now. You know? that, that's more That's more severe, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, but but so yeah, I've you never can see, experienced but, an earthquake myself. I've uh, never experienced yeah. an earthquake. I've been through tons of them. Yeah, growing up in California, you know. So what's the protocol, Graham? Get out of the of building if you're in it. Well, it depends. From outside well, yeah, or what? 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 That would depend what 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 kind of building you're in and where it's at. And mm-hmm. um, well, okay, like, let's say okay, you're in a you're in a skyscraper or something, and you're on, yeah, and you're on the yeah. ground, and you're on the ground floor. So you say, "All right, I'm going to run." You want to get out. I'm going to run outside, but you realize when you run outside that the building might fall on you. Well, not not only that, but there's all kinds of those buildings up and down the street, <laughs> right. and they all have huge glass windows, and and so depending on the strength of the quake, if all those buildings start rattling and all that glass starts spraying, it's going to go down on right. the, on the street. On you, yeah, you want right. you want you want to be under something, something sturdy that's not going right. to fall, be fallen on by something bigger. Right. Um, so, right. Yeah, but if you're in a house or like, like a regular house, uh, you're, yep. you're, you're probably okay. Uh, you know, they say to stand in the doorways um, because that I've heard that th- those are stronger. But yep. uh, d- depending on what's in your yard, just go to the yard. Uh, earthquakes don't last very long—a minute, two minutes at the most. Um, right. Usually shorter than that. Usually fifteen to twenty seconds. But, yeah. Um, uh, but but if you if you look out in your yard and there's not a huge tree that's gonna fall on you, then go <laughs> go to your yard. Um, and you'll be you'll be all right out there. I remember mm-hmm. when, when I was a kid. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know how it was seven or eight, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Me me and my brother and some some friends, we had a, a tether ball down on these like uh, levels we had going down into the canyon. Um, yeah so, yeah. So we're yeah. Down, so we're down there playing playing on the tether, tether ball. Yeah. Thing. And uh, my mom uh, comes running. Uh, we we started to hey, what's going on here because we saw the fence there flopping Moving. back and forth. Saw, well, you're, yeah. you're right, Flash. I was never actually a kid, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So it was, so we saw this fence start wobbling back and forth, and then my we, my mom comes running out of the house. It was, it was a good hundred yards from the house to where we yeah were, yeah scraping her head off. Get into the house! Get into the house! <laughs> but where we were. We we were absolutely perfectly safe. You were was, fine, yeah. unless, unless the ground was to open up and swallow open up us. Open up right there where yeah. you were. Yeah. yeah. Then, but so she wanted us all to get in the house where she had all like <laughs> her glass knickknacks and everything floating around. Right. Or, oh you know, God. On, on shelves all over the place. She loved that those little freaking knickknacks, man. Yeah. Any, anyway, so <laughs> so anyway, that was, it was a pretty good sized quake. I don't remember what year it was, but it was uh, mid sixties. Mid to late sixties and well, maybe sixty nine. I think in, there was one in San Diego. I, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. so uh, I don't know either. But either way, like I said, it depends where you are and what you're doing uh, as to right. what as to what the proper action is for an earthquake. But you live in you 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 live in Wisconsin, so yeah, it ain't a problem. I re- it ain't it's a- not really a problem here, no. <laughs> and where I live, but we do have <laughs> fracking here, and we have loud, unexplained loud booms and stuff. Flash, so Flash says it was 1971. Oh, okay. Well, that was close. Yeah, that plant, close. planting weed does stop uh, quakes. So that would that would help. I mean, or hemp, you know. Yeah, I, I, we, you know. Isn't Silmar up in LA? This is a San Diego-based quake. Um, I, I don't know where Silmar is. Anyway. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. It was a good one. It was a good shaker. Uh, but uh, yeah, whatever. Nobody died, as far as I know. Or oh, that, cool. Or as far as I recall, I should say. So, right. Yeah, it was a long time ago, and um, you know. Yeah, you were a kid. Um, Playing um, tetherball. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you know, you had to. Um, yeah, there was a lot of them. A lot of quakes. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I the one I remember the most is the one in um, San Francisco. Oh, the, that the baseball game. Yeah, the the baseball game was going on. Yeah, yep, I remember that one. Yeah, that was a that was a bad one. It was a bad one. That that, that people took, thought that one was like the big one. That definitely hurt. Some are going to be yeah. Yep, and there was some big ones in L.A. There was there's, there's been a lot of them, but. Whatever. Yeah, 1989. Yep, that's right. I think that's the year. It was, year a, play, it was, it was. a playoff yep. playoff game or World Series game. Like October of 1989. Yeah, it was either playoff or World Series game. I forget which. 
Probably, I think it was the World Series. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. I, was I watching, had to look that up to figure out. I, 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 was, I, was I was watching that game on the TV. Yeah, me too. And all of a sudden, shit started shaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Flash was there. Flash was there. All right. Wow. Cool. Anyway, oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's, you know, you don't have to worry about quakes. Where I'm at, I don't really have to worry about quakes. No, uh, I'm I'm far away from the New Madrid. It's called the New. It's the New Madrid. Fault. New Madrid. New Madrid. Okay. Yeah. So uh, anyway, whatever. All right, we're gonna play some more music here. All righty. And where are we at? Where are we at? Smoke it if you got it. In if Trader, you don't, Trader you should get some. Sam's. Trader Sam's. Is that different than Trader, Trader Joe's? No, he says Trader Sam's. Where? In the chat. Oh, okay. Well, there might be a Trader Sam's up there somewhere. I don't know who Trader Sam's We Sam have Trader is. Joe's here. That's Sam. What a traitor. <laughs> in the U.S. we have it, but not in my city. All right. This is uh, Carlos Santana. Santana. A Miss Chloe request from back in May. That was very nice, very nice. Trampled by Turtles Whiskey's official quarantine video released back in May of this year. Uh, Moose Girl request there. Before that was Leo Baraccioli covering Billy Idol's White Wedding. And we kicked it off with a Chloe request. I, I did not realize how long that track was uh, when, when, I, when, I, when I started playing it. 18 and a half minutes there. Nice one, Chloe. Uh, Carlos Santana. No one to depend on. Black Magic Woman and Oyo. Oye, como va? So, uh, uh, but I loved every minute of it, let me tell you. So, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Moose and Chloe, for those requests. Uh, Doug, uh, I dug them. I dug them. I dug them. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for playing that one, because that one they've done in the quarantine time, you know. Yeah, that was a quarantine and they, video. They, I had to play separately, and then I don't know how these guys are doing this. They must have some awesome editors and video guys that can just meld this shit together, you know? Uh, they must, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like Leo does. I don't know how he does his stuff, but uh, he's, he's got... Yeah, he's he, amazing. Every week he's putting something out. Yeah, I didn't even put play this week's yet, but... Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, he's awesome. But, if you guys don't know who the hell this guy is, even if you're not into, like that kind of music, he is very talented. I Props to that man. He's, well, he's his, incredible. His, his track from this week is Lenny Kravitz. Oh, oh really? Are yeah. you going to go my way? Yeah. That one? Yeah. Oh, oh, Grim. Uh, I uh, love that song so much. <laughs> if, we have, if we have time, if we have time, I'll play it. But All if, right. And though you can save it. You but, don't have but, to. But I already, have, I already have the next set set up, so. Yeah, you don't have to change anything. Just we'll, we'll save it. I'll wait. I'll I can look it up tomorrow on YouTube or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, anyway, cool. anyway, uh, yeah. The the not the NAP, the non aggression principle. Uh, that means that. Oh, they, I thought you meant nap, like take a nap. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand. That's what you thought. That's what people don't understand. What's the nap? Oh, yeah. And then when you tell somebody. You follow the non-aggression principle. They say, "Oh, you're right. a, you're a pacifist." Nesimist, no, right? No, I ain't no freaking pacifist. No, because you, you will defend yourself if you're threatened, right? You come at me. Exactly. At, you look out. Don't start no shit. Won't be no shit. Um, <laughs> that's what that comes down to. It's it's uh you know it's 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 an old uh, anarchist voluntarist thing uh, that's uh, been around for. A long time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going gonna... I like it. I like it. I mean, and I also like, you know, I don't know if you guys know much about Charlie Chaplin. I know he was a... You know that he's an actor. Yeah. He was an actor. Old right. time actor. He did like the Buster Keaton type mimes because when movies first started, they had no sound. Right. So everything had to be acted out. Anyway, he was in like the Odd Fellows Society. 
Oh, and he yeah. was also an anarchist. He he believed in anarchist principles. He believed in less government, you know, no government, basically, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. unless you're doing harm or stealing, you know what I mean, to another person, you know, have at it. Right. Right? Right, right. absolutely. And I know people are like, oh, yeah, that could we couldn't have that. Why not? Yeah, what why the hell not? Reasoning be, why, what why? is your reasoning for all this regulation and oversight and monitoring and invasion of your your privacy, I mean, people's privacy? Yeah. Why are you for that? People? Because you're worried that they don't if you if you don't think like okay, let's say an whatever is inspector in the city of Eau Claire Passes a certain restaurant, right? But I walk <laughs> in there and the place is a dump. Yeah, yeah, JJ. I'm uh, not gonna eat there, okay? Right, right. I don't care what the inspector says. Right. I'm not eating there, okay? Exactly. I'm gonna trust if I get to know the owners of the place and I trust them that they're not gonna give me a bad product and they have a clean place and it looks like they, you know, have a good business there. I'm going to give them my money, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. I'll go to one place one time, but if your place sucks, I will not come back. Okay. Absolutely. Right. I will not come back. So that's how it works. Right. Graham, if you offer an inferior product, you won't get business. There you go. And that's just life. Common right? sense. It's common sense. Common too. sense. So why do we need all these regulations and crap? Look what the government's allowed corporations to do. Look how much the government has allowed corporations to pollute this planet. Oh, yeah. It's And they don't get, you know, some of them have, have been brought to court or whatever and put fines on them or whatever, yeah. but they're still in business. Sure. Okay, now this spider's really pissing me off. He's dead now, that motherfucker, because he's on my desk, that bitch. Okay, so you gotta fly. He was on the wall, and now he's on the desk. It's a fast black one. Fast, fast little small black spiders do not live in my house. If you're a fast spider, you're a dead spider. Let's just say that. Like, if I see that bitch again, he's dead. <laughs> anyway. Right. Uh, thanks, JJ. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, 60 candles. That'd be like a bonfire. That's, yeah, my, um, yes, it would be like a bonfire. We can't have Grimner's beard catching on fire, JJ. <laughs> you know, oh, we, we'll put a six and a zero on there. There you go. You know how they make those yeah, ones? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> All right, anyway, um, so JJ, JJ's got an illness, and, and, and he may, uh, he's been tested for the corona or whatever. Um, and, but he said he's not doing the mask thing and that's a good idea. It's a good concept. It's a good, yeah. And this here tells you exactly, well, tells you kind of why, or this guy's why. All right. Uh, Sweden's disease expert says just wearing face masks could be very dangerous. Uh, this is on the New York post from a couple of days ago. Oh, we've been saying this for, forever. I, I, I know, but now you got since like start, a, not forever. Okay, well, but just, since just, the mask thing. Just, 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 just listen. Just listen. And I think it mentions it here. Um, uh, this is ba oh, I don't know if it mentioned this article or another one that I read. Either way, this guy uh, Tegnell, uh, Anders Tegnell, uh, he's basically he's considered to be uh, equal uh, with he's Sweden's version of Fauci, except he's not a liar. <laughs> so Sweden's top infectious disease expert has resisted recommending face masks for the general population, arguing it's very dangerous if people believe the coverings will stop the spread of coronavirus. Uh, Anders Tegnell, chief epidemiologist at Sweden's public health agency, has repeatedly expressed skepticism that face masks will control coronavirus outbreaks. Or any other kind of outbreaks, for that matter. It don't stop the flu. It don't stop shit. Uh, anyway, it's very dangerous to believe face masks would change the game when it comes to COVID-19, says Tegnell, who is considered the country's... Oh, there it is. Uh, a country's equivalent of Dr. Fauci. Uh, 
Uh, he noted that countries with widespread mass compliance, such as Belgium and Spain, were still seeing rising virus rates. Face masks can be a complement to other things when other things are safely in place, he said. But to start with having face masks and think you can crowd your buses and shopping malls, that's definitely a mistake. Uh, he completely brushed off the prospect of wearing masks last month, saying, with numbers diminishing, and Sweden basically has zero now, uh, uh, new cases or anything, uh, with the diminishing very quickly in Sweden, we see no point in wearing a face mask in Sweden, not even on public transportation. Tegdell has argued that evidence about the effectiveness of face mask use was astonishingly weak. Uh, I'm surprised that we don't have more better studies uh, showing what, uh, what effect masks actually have. The infectious disease expert has faced backlash. Oh, he's going against the grain. He's not agreeing with the agenda. So he has faced backlash uh, after the nation uh, controversially refused to lock down, leading to a higher death rate per capita than neighboring countries that took stricter, stricter approaches. Uh, would based on uh, different kind of numbers. Anyway, Sweden has recorded at least 85,000 cases, which is nothing, right? Uh, including more than 5,800 fat uh, fatalities, according to who? Johns Hopkins. You Those know? evil bastard <laughs> scumbags! Those pieces of shit, man. Those pieces, pieces of, of shit. shit. Scumbag oh, evil boy. fuckers. All right, fuck uh, them, okay. John Hopkins bastards. Yep. Fuck you, John Topkins. Who the fuck you are? Fuck you too. They're they're at the center are of you, this. They're, they're, are they're you in... playing that song? That's what? just a tonight. No. Oh darn it! I, anyway, I, I that's I'm... the song for them. Okay, good. Well, everybody yeah, knows I'm the fight say. song, right? <laughs> everybody knows the fight song, right? <laughs> no, not everybody. More people should know that song. Okay, this yeah, is uh, right. something that I was kind of led to through a, a mm -hmm. side path. And um, I, I don't know if uh, this is available for public to see or not, uh, but apparently, and this film is about the 1986 uh, National oh, Child National okay. National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act. Oh God! The NCVIA. And uh, so they, this guy Andrew Wakefield, yeah. Andrew Wakefield put out this new film, or he's putting it out now. I'm not sure if it's quite out yet. I uh -huh. think it's I think it's out now, but I don't know if you can just go see it somewhere or if it's on anywhere to see it. And it's called 1986 colon, The Act, a film about big, <laughs> big all about uh, big farmers' immunity from vaccine liability. Uh, so here it is, the much anticipated 1986 Good. The Act by Andrew Wakefield has oh it has finally been released, revealing the truth about the infamous 1986. National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, the NCVIA, and its detrimental impact on the lives of children. Uh, now available for online streaming, but I couldn't find it anywhere where I, I looked for it. Uh, I think you know, I think not for free anyway. I did find it on the, their website, but you have to pay, and I don't I don't want to pay. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate I appreciate their their uh, their efforts and all that, but I, I don't want to pay. Um, <laughs> so yeah no uh, so any, anyway it, it shows all the information of, of how all these big pharma companies are, are totally mm -hmm. have total immunity against any kind of yep. damage done to children yep. or or not just children obviously also anybody other, uh, uh, other people um yeah so the, the thing is people so, need, you know why would they do that though because they know. Well, they, and they talk about it. There's so much risk they, with these these vaccines that they're rushing to push through. Have, you have, know, wait, wait. And they don't know. They haven't tested them. They just put it on the market and use us all as guinea pigs. Anybody that's willing to take their jab, you're a guinea pig. Oh, I thought I had the trailer. They're testing this shit on you. They, you know what I mean? I mean, they're calling the the creation of this vaccine Operation Warp Speed. I mean, they're just rushing it through. They're not, it's just ridiculous. If you guys trust these people, I don't know what to tell you, you know, in any way, shape, or form. Do not trust them. I wouldn't. I mean, you can if you want to, but why? They're proven liars. If, if you've done any kind of research, you know that they're lying to you. 
If you haven't, but if you think they're not lying to you, then you haven't done enough research, obviously. Because that's what they do. That's their main tactic, is lying. And the way they get it out to you is through your TV and your social media. Right. Okay, we're gonna. We're, you're we're, gonna. You know, really, you can't think for yourself. We're we're gonna want. We're gonna watch the trailer for this film. All right, let's do that. And uh, and uh, you'll be able to. Uh, uh, where, where the hell is it? Where's my damn? Uh... Here it is. <laughs> I couldn't find my. Couldn't find my place. All right. Uh, so this is from this new movie, and. Uh, I, this is great if this gets out there and gets wide, li- widely spread. Ford Motor Company introduced the Pinto. It was a small car with a big problem. Ford was accused of causing up to... All right. There you have it. Uh, I guess it came out July 8th, according to that there. Um, but uh, this this new film, if you could find it and watch it, um, I, I'd recommend that you do. Um I'll put the. Uh, I'll actually embed this uh, this video, this trailer video into the uh, the, the blog post tomorrow uh, for y'all. And um, uh, here's the article uh, t- t- talking about it over on globalresearch.ca. Uh, did I put that in there? No, I didn't. Oh, wait, I did, didn't I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, so I, I I think it'll be huge if this thing gets out there, but I imagine like like you know everything else that doesn't agree with the agenda they they slam yeah. it down. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to see we'll have to see on that. Um, right. Um. So I have something I just want to touch on real quick because California is on fire again. Of course. And some friends of mine that I know. Uh, through social media, but I feel like they're family almost. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, they live there, and right. their daughter, yeah. who's like 19, she's a firefighter. She's a wild firefighter fighter. All right. And it's just heartbreaking to see their posts because, like, literally their town is burning down. They live in a mountain town in, um, somewhere in the, the mountains of California. Right. And it's just devastating. I mean, and I don't know if you agree with this, Graham. I don't know how much you know. Like, you're from California, but you were from San Diego. Yeah. So you didn't live, like, in the mountains and everything. But you had, you know, when when you were growing up, it was pretty rural still, right? Well, no. I mean, I, I was in... It was, was it well all, like, I, built I, up already? I, I, lived in, uh, I lived in, you know, San Diego. Um, yeah. Uh, in you know, not in downtown, but in suburb. Um, so it wasn't rural. But was it really rural, or was it like built up? Yeah, it, was, it was just a town, like any like any neighborhood. Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is, but you you have you had experience? Like we know you had experience with earthquakes, but what about wildfires? Oh you ever yeah. Well, that? yeah. The, the house that I was in that we. Well, at the time I was like four till ten or eleven. Yeah, uh, we, we lived on a canyon. The, the back okay. of that, the, oh, back, the okay. back of the back, the back of the. I mean, there was the the the. We were on a cul at the end of this cul-de-sac, and then behind the house was just this canyon, this huge canyon. Right. You know, we had we had our yard, and we had a canyon. Um, yeah. And, and and so there was wildfires in that canyon all the time. It was just you know. Sagebrush. So what would happen? Would they like make you evacuate, or was that? Well, we, I don't. I don't recall. I don't recall ever having to evacuate, but uh, okay. I mean, we, we we watched real close when 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 uh, right. when, when 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 there was fires in that canyon, you know, because um, you know they come right up those canyon walls real easy. Right. So. Okay. So what I'm asking you is, is it true that do you think um, do you buy into this theory that? California hasn't done enough work to get rid of some of that debris that's in those forests. Well, see, I was considering the fact that there's so many homes around all these areas that they haven't like gotten rid of that stuff. You know what I mean? You think that fuels it? I I think it's just a natural thing. I don't I don't buy into that theory because I know that 
but it's California. See, I'm I'm used to winter. Yeah, see, well, we and were... I'm used to stuff like degrading because of winter under snow. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I in California, it's a way different climate, so I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, we we didn't we didn't have we didn't have the uh, we we didn't have the the big forests in the in the in the town in the city. Uh, if you went up into the mountains, sure, there's there's plenty of forests up there, but. Uh, in, in the city. See, okay, so trust is, sorry, Grim, but trust is saying it's so big and there's so much brush. There's no way, right, you can't clean all that up after, I mean, and so they, they well, started see, to do the control problem. burns, but I think with the control burns, they, they've they started fires doing those, you well, know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, but one of the big things there is is they stopped a lot of the logging, and the loggers would go in there and, and clean out the old the old growth. Uh, right. And get rid of that stuff. So yeah. Um. So so the logging was actually good, but but you had the uh, you know the whatever environmentalists or whoever they call themselves. I just, right. That 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 prevented uh, people from doing that. They had laws. Right. They passed laws. I mean, San, uh, not San Diego necessarily, because there wasn't a lot of logging in San Diego. But uh, further mm-hmm. up north, there certainly was. Where in they're the having, mountains and where, stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Up up further up north, where they're having all these big fires now. Up in Northern California. Right. Uh, I mean, so. yes, JJ's right. Um, fires do help things grow. I mean, it is kind of a cleansing process. But the problem in California is all these fucking people out there built homes in the middle of a goddamn forest. Yeah. You know, like I would not, I would not, as, for as much money as these homes cost, I would pick a different spot to build a fucking million dollar home, dude. Yeah, or, you, you know, know, yeah, California, it's what? It's the hippie state or something? It's groovy? Yeah. California sucks, dude. Build, build it out okay? of titanium. I mean, something. Northern California might still be good, but Southern California, why do you think Graham fucking left? <laughs> why do you think he's in the middle of New Mexico somewhere? Yeah, bum You know, either. I mean, come on. Yeah. Why do you think people are leaving now? Right, right. Why would you build a million dollar home in the middle of a goddamn fucking forest fire? Right, Earth or so, uh, on the earthquake or an eroding coastline. Right, line. an earthquake will wipe it out. A t- tsunami. I mean, well, I don't know about tsunami. You name it. Yeah, well, no, it can. Yeah. If you're on the coast, it can. I know, but I don't, I don't recall ever seeing a tsunami down there. But right, uh, but, but there is a eroding coastlines, and people build right on those. And the earthquake factor. Yeah. So. I mean. Northern California, yeah, it's great. Oh, weed's legal. Let's grow some weed in Northern California. Like, it's it's saturated now. Yeah. Like, that secret's been out a lot for 30 years that Northern California is a place to go to grow oh, good yeah. weed. Humboldt County, I mean, baby. Uh, and longer than that. It's been, yeah. it, that's when, since hey Ashbury, since the fucking 60s, everyone knows that fucking they grow good weed up in, the, what, what is it, Hayward, was, Hayward, California? Humboldt. Humboldt. Humboldt County. Yeah, yeah. Humboldt County. That's anyway. not a big secret anymore. That's, that's, you anyway, know, now yeah, that, Cal- I mean, Colorado's saturated with all these people that want to grow their own fucking weed and shit, which is great. I right. think, you know, why, why is it just dispensaries are allowed to grow weed and dispense weed? Fuck you, dude. That's why we've been against legalization for a long time. We're like, fuck that. You know, yeah. Now they're telling you, oh, you can only grow this many plants for your own personal use. Fuck you, buddy. I'm going to grow as many fucking plants as I want to, cunt. Right. You know, if I got fucking acres or something, guess what? I'm going to say it's all hemp, and that's what it is. So anyway, fuck anyway uh, New Mexico is yeah. sending a bunch of fire trucks and, and guys out oh, really? there. Oh, really? Yeah, a bunch of guys from New Mexico. Oh, to know, California? So. Yeah, 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 help them put the fires out. It's bad. I mean, my... From what I heard, it's really bad. Like, well, it's, you know. I mean, if if I was the mom of that child that's nineteen, <laughs> out there in the goddamn wilderness battling these goddamn fires, I'd be terrified. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and it's a girl. I mean, not that it matters. Gender doesn't matter. But I mean, just the fact that she's doing that. Right. It's like holy shit, girl. You know. Yeah. Good. Good on you. But anyway, um, it's bad news. It, it happens every year, though, Grim. This fires out there. I mean, oh yeah. Why would you build a million dollar home in a known fire zone? I mean, it's like building another, rebuilding a home in a flood zone over right. and over again. Yeah, and people do it. <laughs> it's a different result. Like 
You're going to get the same result. You know this fucking bitch is going to flood or this bitch is going to burn out. Right. So why are you spending this money to build this shit? Exactly. Why don't you just put it somewhere smarter, dude? Exactly. I mean, come on. Yeah. You're spending all this money? Oof. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right, let's play some more music. Yeah, let's do that. And, uh, I mean, we... I don't know what to talk about hardly anymore. I mean, this show is probably boring as hell, like, tonight, I but... I got, uh, it's this... like trying to fucking, you know, not talk about some of the stuff that we've been talking about for fucking months and months and months. Like, fuck uh, this. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it gets old. It's, I'm old. I'm sick of it. I'm already done. I'm over it. It's like, right. fuck you. Fuck you okay. and your mask. Fuck you and your shit. Yep. Fuck off. Yep. All right, here you go. All right. <laughs> All right, girls. Nice job. Nice job. Larkin Poe covering Steppenwolf's Born to be Wild. Uh, that's their newest. It just came out on uh, Wednesday, I think. Yeah. So, uh, hey, good stuff, girls. Appreciate it. Uh, before that, uh, Miss Chloe requests there, Grateful Dead, uh, The Wait, uh, with a Dennis Hopper tribute there. Uh, so that was great stuff. And kicked it off with the Moose Girl request, Tom Petty. You don't know how it feels. Yep. So uh, that, was, that was all good stuff there. All right. <laughs> all righty. Yes, all good stuff. Oh, my God. Mark right. and Paul killed that song. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling wow. you. Wow. Yeah, they, uh, that's, 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 that was that, good. That's their latest and greatest, so. Wow, um, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. really cool. They're talented. They are. I, I like them. I like them. So, uh. So I think you were right, Grim, about the Arizona thing, and, um, well, it's, it's up there, writer. You know, it, it's, uh, it's up in, there, in that area. It's hard to tell, because a lot of right. those, those, uh, high, high bluffs and, uh, uh, that red, that red rock type stuff. Um, it, it could be uh, Arizona or New Mexico if you, right. as, as you're coming from from Arizona, uh, driving eastward. And on, it was all on Route 66. Uh, yeah, it but, was. It was but, Route but now, 66. But, but they now, filmed that movie. Yeah, but yeah. now, but now, as you're driving on I-40, you see the same scenery. So, uh, so from from New Mexico, I mean, from Arizona, driving eastward. Uh, into New Mexico on I-40 there, you'll, you'll see that exact scenery. So it, it's hard cool. to tell. You know, it's uh, beautiful. It's before, beautiful, before, though. I mean, it's, yeah. it's gorgeous. Like when the sun's setting and the... Oh, yeah, it's, it is. Oh, it's, my it's, God. It's, it's like, wow. But, it look, you know, it looks that way up in Utah, too, in Colorado. And right. Maybe. And then, like, you know, Four Corners, like Flash is saying, that's a cool area. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll... I've been down... I've been to New Mexico, but I went down through Taos. I don't know if you know what road that I would have taken, but I, we went through... I probably, went through I, I, Taos. You're, you're probably on I-25. Down to Santa Fe. Yep. That yeah. sounds familiar. Twenty five sounds yeah. familiar. I twenty five. That, that, that's the one that takes you from New Mexico up through Colorado, up into Wyoming. Yeah. Up into Wyoming. Yeah. No, but I went down through Taos to get to Santa Fe, dude. I was going south. Okay. I was going yeah. south. Right, but it's the yeah. same, same road that takes you north, takes you south. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. I'm not familiar. You live there. I don't. I don't. Yeah. But, um, no, I mean, Taos is very beautiful. Have you ever been there, Grim? I have not. No, I've been oh, through. Oh, God, dude. It's, in the, it's uh, so beautiful. Like, yeah, I've been right, you know, next to it, near it, but I, yeah, I, I never it's went. It's so beautiful. I never went into the town up there. Right. So, um, yeah, it's yeah, pretty. Yeah. Like, I only drove through it. I didn't even stop there. I just drove through it. I mean, it was amazing. It was really beautiful. Like, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. And Santa Fe is a very interesting town. I really, you know, it's weird. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but Santa Fe. You know what it? Santa when you Fe. go to some places, sometimes you get like this weird feeling. Okay. No, I don't know how to explain it. Like a weird feeling, because you know how they promote the aliens and shit. You know what I mean? It's just like you you get that in your brain, like you know, aliens well, landed in New Mexico. And, yeah, but not in Santa Fe. No, no, but still, when you're there, even in Santa Fe, you see alien stuff, like there's alien-themed restaurants and shit. You know oh, what I mean? Uh, 
Sure, sure. Aliens are everywhere in New Mexico. Like all the tourist locations have alien inflatables and alien depictions, and and it's always the one depiction though, you know. Yeah. Which, if you were smart, you'd like depict the other types of aliens that have been discovered. Oh well, yeah, but the greys are the ones. Yeah, but the greys are the most well known, so that's what everyone depicts. But if you if you knew or you did more any research, you would know that there are pictures of the different alien species, like sure, drawings, but, hand but, drawings. But but, but, but the but the greys are the one that crashed in Os- in Roswell. Yes, they are so. definitely. Yes, they are the ones that crashed there, and there was actually two crashes. One was in Roswell, and one was on an Indian reservation, and a group of five young boys were all walking around doing what five young boys do during that time. This was 1945 or whatever, right? Right. It was 1945, right? The Roswell? Oh, no, it's 37. Uh, wait, uh, 40, 30, uh, 40, uh, 47. 47. Yeah. So two years after World War Two. Yeah. And so it was the 1940s, dude. I mean, you know, there wasn't internet, there wasn't video games, you know. If you lived on a Native American Indian reservation, you went out exploring. Right. Okay? Yep. yep, and there's a lot and of those. You were a teenager. Well, right. There's a lot of reservations and, here. Yeah, and they were exploring... And they came across this crash, another crash, right? The alien craft, and they, they, you know, got their elders and everything, and their medicine men, and they tried to save the species, which using their ways, but their ways might have worked, you know. I mean, not on a traditional human, but um, we're talking sage and spirituality and Palo Santo wood and all these different herbs and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But those didn't work. You know, he was too badly injured. They couldn't save him. Yeah. But they kept it a secret. Sure. Because they knew, you know, because they they, they, they came to like this, this being. You know what I mean? They they felt bad. I mean, they have, hum, you know, compassion. You know what I mean? And so they covered up that crash site with sand. And they just... You know, it, it became a verbal story from that point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Native Americans truly believe in extraterrestrial. They truly believe in all that stuff. UFOs, extraterrestrial, all that. Sure, they know. Because it goes back in time. Yeah. You know, the ancient aliens type of stuff and stuff. You know, like, like that. Right. I mean, I'm not too well versed in that stuff, but I'm pretty convinced that... It's real. I mean, I don't think it's fake. I don't think it's made up shit. I think it's real, you know? No, no. The only thing that's made up is the cover-up. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. All right, well, let me hit this uh, story real quick here. Okay. Because it's such happy news. (laughs) Oh, really? Really? You're being sarcastic, I can tell. Zerohedge.com. IRS projects millions of jobs will vanish for years. Yep, the IRS projects 37 million less. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, 37 million less W-2 filings in 2021. Uh, so uh, the I- IRS publication projects huge reductions in W-2 filings through 2027. Uh, so uh, pick that up from Bloomberg. The IRS forecast will be about 229.4 million employee classified jobs in 2021, about 37.2 million fewer than it had estimated last year before the virus hit. According to the updated data released Thursday, the statistics are an estimate of how many W-2 form, forms uh, that are used to track employee wages. Okay, so... If there's going to be 37 million less jobs next year and then far more throughout the following years up through 2027, well, I didn't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just, well, people are screwed. What, what, what are people supposed to do? What are people supposed right. To do? You know, okay, so I'm just going to say one thing, like, um, 
someone made a sad face when you talked about losing the loss of jobs, right? Yeah. Then my comeback was, you're better off working for yourself. Absolutely. Like, it's better for your health, too. Like, if you don't like working with toxic chemicals, don't work with toxic chemicals. There okay? you go. <laughs> don't do it. If you, you're better off working for yourself and doing trade and barter, okay? Sure. And doing something creative. If you're good at something, you're smart, you like being creative, the way is to go in the business for yourself, dude. I mean, not even in the business, because the shit's going to go down, dude. The economy's yeah. fucked up, dude. Even though they say, oh, the economy's booming, whatever. It's booming for the stockholders, okay? We don't. Me and you, we don't hold stock in these companies, okay? No, no, we don't. They don't give a fuck about you. And those companies are us. You know what I mean? And quit trusting their doctors so much. They want to put you on expensive medication that you can't afford that you don't even fucking need. Simply. You know? you got to be yourself. It, it's, it, We've been programmed to trust them, right? I get that. It's brainwashing. You've it, been brainwashed. We all have. It's it's really it's kind it can be hard to get out of it, but it's really not that hard to get out of it. It's very simply this: if the government said it, it's a lie. Right? They're <laughs> lying to you up the ass, and to believe them on anything they say is asinine. Yeah. You're yeah. better off just going. What can I do for myself? How am I gonna fucking survive when this shit hits the fucking fan? Let's say they cut off your electricity. You have a backup heat source. You live in Missouri. It gets wintry there. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to fucking plan. We've been talking about this since this show started, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's called taking the bull by your the horns and not having government do it for you. Fuck them. They don't give a <laughs> fuck about you. No, they don't. You know what I mean? Right. They don't. So we all should fucking just say Fuck you. I can take care of myself. I don't need a goddamn babysitter. <laughs> you know? Exactly. If you've got a brain in your head, and you're not a child, you don't need a, you shouldn't need a babysitter. If you think you do, I would question that. Absolutely. Why do you think you need a goddamn babysitter? You can't make your own decisions. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you that you need a babysitter as an adult? Right. Come on now. Grow up. There you go. Okay, let's do this thing. Thank you. All right. Okay. Oh, it's nothing thing. to be sad about. Oh, yeah, that's the gals jamming in the van there. Oh, what's this? A little close-up thing. I don't need that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, that's the uh, Larkin Poe there covering the Black Betty for us, jamming in the van. Oh, man. Well, that's going to wrap it up. It's been a good time. I've had fun. You had fun? Yeah, she had fun. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yes, I had fun. Great. Yes, that's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, the, tomorrow uh, you will have a dork table, but it'll be late. I don't know if uh, Flash wasn't exactly specific, but an hour, maybe two hours late. Okay, so, so just all right. You know, whatever. It's, it's open. It's yeah, just, it's not yeah, like you're going to interrupt yeah. anything. It doesn't matter. Whatever time you want to go on, go on. Okay. There you go. And I'll whatever. be on. I'll be on Sunday and my normal time, noon with the blues. Yep. Noon Eastern, and uh, following yep. me will be Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. Open up the big old can of whoop ass. Yep. Check, check the schedule over there on RealLibertyMedia.com dot com for all the rest of the shows coming up throughout the week. And um, we need more shows. Uh, but uh, that's all right. Anyway. Yeah, I dare you to do a show. I dare anyway, you. I dare, I dare you to do. Yeah, no, no, no show Monday. Who do that? Whatever. I, I, I should be returning with the uh, It's All Connected on the 31st. Oh, good. So Cool, Grim. Uh, good. But, but not whatever, this Whatever, you know, whatever. Whatever's comfortable for you, man. Yeah, yeah, not this Monday, I, to, but uh, the following one. Yeah. Anyway, okay, y'all cool. have a great uh, night, weekend. Uh, yeah, week. Have a good one, everybody. And uh, stay away from people because they're sickly ill, <laughs> sickly disease-ridden creatures. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> Peace. Peace.